Hi everyone, my name is Ryan H. Lewis, and today I want to do an update on a video that I actually published about three years ago on an AWS service called CodeStar. Now, you may not be familiar with CodeStar because it's actually one of those services that uh, blew up for a hot minute back in 2017 and then kind of petered out throughout the years. Unfortunately, that's something that AWS does with quite a few of their services. They have a big launch, they have all these huge plans, and then they don't really go anywhere. Unfortunately, CodeStar is kind of one of those services, but I did a video three years ago and some things have changed, so I wanted to do an update on this. So this is AWS CodeStar in 2020. So let's talk about what's new in CodeStar that has changed in the past three years. The main thing that has changed is that the UI for CodeStar has been updated to the new AWS UI. So if you watch my previous video, you've seen the old UI it kind of looked like the old AWS. It did have kind of a, you know, it's its own appeal. I actually liked it um, quite a bit, but the new UI has been updated to match kind of the UI that they're doing with all the other AWS services. Um, this is actually something that I, I'm not uh, too fond of, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Another thing that changed is that the services that CodeStar works with have gotten quite a bit more mature. It's actually one of the cons that I gave in my last video is that a lot of the services kind of weren't worth using yet and they needed to be uh, they needed to have features added and become more mature. And that's actually what they did in the last three years. Unfortunately, not CodeStar, <laughs> just the services that it works with. So let's go through the pros and cons that I mentioned in my first video three years ago and talk about my opinions now. So one of the first pros that I mentioned previously is the dashboard. I really liked the CodeStar dashboard. I thought it was cool. You could have a lot of different features and a lot of different metrics have a lot of different data points in there that could help you understand the health of your project. And while there still is a dashboard, it is kind of the bland, normal AWS service UI that everything else has. It doesn't really differentiate itself. And I feel like it doesn't display things quite as well. Let me show you what that looks like. So here I have the CodeStar um, <laughs> service dashboard. Um, you can look at your projects and I built out this uh, pizza lovers project to really try code star out and see what it looks like. Um, so you can see if you, if you've been using AWS with the new UI, this looks like every other service. Like it's, it's almost not even like a dashboard. It actually looks like a, like a details panel for a RDS database or something like that. So it's kind of, I don't know. It doesn't feel dashboard to me. I can even uh, minimize that here. So if you look in the project, you can see some good information like the um, status of the project. You can also look at CloudWatch uh, metrics. And so this is a CloudWatch, a CPU utilization metric for my project. You can also put custom CloudWatch metrics or CloudWatch dashboards here, which honestly, if you took the time to build out a CloudWatch dashboard, it would probably look a lot better than having a single metric. This doesn't, you know, to be honest, unless I really cared about CPU for my project, this doesn't really tell me much. Then you've got the project resources. I don't know why these like deserve to be on a dashboard. It kind of seems like this would be better in a details panel. And then you have the readme for the project from the GitHub repository or, or code commit repository. Again, this, this seems sort of weird to have on a dashboard for a project. Um, and the, the kind of the disappointing thing about this is that, um, well, first of all, I don't know why, again, why do I need to collapse this, but you can only change, you can only change one thing. I mean, you can, you can put the, um, CloudWatch metric here. You can, um, take CloudWatch dashboard JSON to actually have a more, um, built out dashboard. But, you know, I mean, what does this give me other than the CloudWatch dashboard stuff, which I could just go to CloudWatch to get that. It just gives me the pipeline status everything else I don't think I would need on a daily basis. Um, so honestly, the dashboard is just not really what it used to be. It is kind of disappointing now, <laughs> I'll be honest. The next pro that I mentioned it back in 2017 was the integrations with CodeStar. I mentioned that at the time there was only a Jira integration available, but I kind of saw that, 
you know, if they started adding these integrations, they could really go somewhere with them. Well, they didn't really add any integrations. The only main thing they added was the ability to integrate GitHub repositories with CodeStar, which of course is needed. But honestly, they stopped there. They didn't add any other source code repositories. You've just got GitHub or code commit. They didn't add any other issue trackers. You've got GitHub issues and Jira. Um, and really with both of these, even though GitHub and Jira are very popular, there are, um, there are so many other options out there. And like, really, if it kind of reduces the audience for CodeStar for people who use those specific stacks. I don't know that I've actually been at any job that used specifically those two uh, repos and issue trackers. Pretty much every job has used uh, maybe one of them, but the other one was something different. So I don't know, the integrations haven't really been added to, and it kind of seems sad because there's not many people, there's not many companies, not many teams that can use CodeStar because it's not flexible in this way. Now, one of the cons that I mentioned is that getting started with CodeStar projects was actually kind of complicated. It shouldn't have been. I mean, the whole use case of CodeStar is that it's going to be for people who basically need this stuff to be easy. So why would it be so complicated? Well, they've actually solved a lot of the problems uh, with that. So let me show you what that looks like. So when you're creating a new project, the main thing that I had an issue with was that you actually had to go into IAM to create a service role for CodeStar the first time you were doing this. Um, what you'll see is that you don't have to do that anymore. I actually would love to show you um, actually, let me let me see if I change regions and see if this will work. Um, there is a button that will basically automate creating the IAM role for you, uh, which is quite nice. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I change regions. Okay, that's too bad. Um, but essentially, there previously was a, um, you had to go into IAM and create a new service role. Now you can do it with one click. You don't even have to leave the um, main CodeStar page. So that's great. The other thing that I had issue was with Git credentials. Previously, CodeStar only worked with AWS code commit. And so if you're creating a new repository, you had to, ha you had to hash out the Git credentials stuff, which honestly was, pretty inconvenient for a lot of people. Um, now you don't necessarily have to do that because you can use GitHub, which is way more convenient. You do an SSO connection and then you don't have to set up any, any new Git credentials. One of the second cons that I mentioned in my video from three years ago is that there wasn't enough customization with CodeStar and Three years later, it's still, we're basically in the exact same place. So I would say that that is still a con that rings true. The last con that I mentioned with CodeStar is that the underlying services weren't very mature. Specifically, I called out code commit and code pipeline. And I'll say that whether it's because I have, I've actually been using those services in the past few years or that they've actually been doing a lot of development, I think that they're actually quite good now. Code commit is, is basically a good option for uh, managing your source code. It's not quite as public as something like GitHub or GitLab, but it does have all the necessary features to work with the team, such as pull requests, something that they didn't have three years ago. So now that they have that, you know, honestly, code commit, I wouldn't say that there's anything wrong with using it. However, now that you can use GitHub with code start, you don't have to use code commit. So that's pretty nice. I also mentioned code pipeline and I've been using code pipeline for the past two years at my job and code pipeline is actually pretty good. Uh, previously at my, my previous team, I had used Jenkins and I would definitely pick code pipeline over Jenkins. It maybe can't do as many um, non AWS things, but if you're working in AWS, if you're deploying to AWS, then code pipeline has all of the features that you need. And so it working with CodeStar is actually one of the bright spots of CodeStar is that code pipeline is what's being used. So um, not really con anymore, so that's good. So then let's get back to the original question, who is CodeStar for? Is it for you? Well, if you're brand new to CICD, like you maybe don't even really understand what it is and why you would want to use it, 
then CodeStar is probably not a bad option to create a new project and play around, see how CI CD works using all of AWS's native uh, services. But there's not a lot of customization. And with CI CD, there's plenty of different tools and things that you'll want to use in your CI CD. And so honestly, CodeStar is gonna be very limiting. I would say if you have a serverless app to just completely ignore CodeStar and move over to AWS Amplify. AWS Amplify is kind of, I feel like it's the spirit of CodeStar. It's a newer service. And honestly, a lot of the cons that I mentioned with CodeStar, AWS Amplify has already fixed them and it's available now. And I've used it for a couple projects and I've been really impressed with AWS Amplify. I'll probably need to do a video for that later because um, that's a much better option than uh, trying to get things going with CodeStar. So if you don't know CI CD, you don't have a serverless app and you still really wanna figure out if CodeStar can be useful, try it out. However, if you do know CI CD, if you understand code pipeline, if you know some of these services, even if you understand the concepts of CI CD, I would say that the only benefit that CodeStar brings you is being able to build all those things at once and the dashboard. And I showed you the dashboard and honestly, there's just not much to it. I don't think that it adds a lot of value. And actually in my last role, I actually built my own dashboard to kind of do things that CodeStar should do. And it didn't take that long and it had a lot more better information and I could actually customize it. So um, I would say that if you know CI CD, you're probably not going to find anything interesting in CodeStar. The other really bad thing about CodeStar, if you know CI CD or if you work on an existing project is that CodeStar can't be used with existing projects. Whenever you create a new CodeStar project, it creates a new re repository. I tried to connect it to one that already existed in GitHub and it wouldn't even create the CodeStar project because the repo already existed. This is a big mess because I would say for most teams or most people, they're not gonna be creating projects that much. They really have existing projects that maybe they want to try to pull things together with CodeStar. It's just not how it works. And that's very disappointing. So let's talk about my final thoughts with AWS CodeStar. I probably won't be making another video in, in a few years talking about CodeStar unless they significantly overhaul the service. But my final thoughts are that I don't think CodeStar is really for anyone. Small teams probably won't like CodeStar. It doesn't do enough. Enterprise teams probably won't like CodeStar because it doesn't have enough customization. And so there's not really much of an audience left there. Seeing that in the past three years, they haven't done, they haven't done much updates to it. I kind of feel like AWS is thinking the same thing. It seems like maybe they have decided not to invest any more in it. And I don't think that you should, you know, invest any in anything into it either, especially if AWS isn't going to put some muscle behind it. So I don't think CodeStar is really for anyone anymore. Also, in the last few years, I have become a more and more ardent supporter of infrastructure as code. And CodeStar kind of goes against that. One of the big reasons is because to create a CodeStar project in a CloudFormation template, you have to use a CodeStar transform. This is sort of like the serverless transform that the uh, serverless application model is built off of but it's for CodeStar. And the real issue with this CodeStar transform is that three years later, after it being introduced, it is still not documented. The properties that, that you can apply in there, how it works, any of these things aren't documented three years later, which honestly, AWS has some struggles with documentation to begin with. Uh, not having something documented three years later is, you know, there's, there's no excuse for that. So due to the non, uh, documented, uh, cloud formation template, uh, transform for CodeStar and the fact that there haven't been many integrations, it's still not customizable in 2020. I would say move on, look at AWS Amplify, and also just look at some of the developer tools on their own. Code pipeline is awesome. Code commit, 
yeah, you can use it if you want to, it works. Um, code deploy, uh, code build, those are all great products. Use those, use those together. Don't worry about code start. It's not really gonna do anything for you. That's it for today on Code Star. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more. And thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you next week.